all praise, all glory, and honor. Thanks and appreciation belongs to only one. And that is the true and the living Elohim, the mighty Yahweh. For Yahweh alone is the creator of the heavens, the earth, the sea, and everything in it. Yahweh is the Elohim of our great righteous ancestors, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Yahweh is our king, and beside him, there is none else. Brothers and sisters, people of the world, I'm honored this evening. We thank you for your patience. We love you all. We appreciate you. Tonight, we're going to be speaking of true unity. True unity. Hallelujah. I praise Yah for true unity. We have to understand the, what the Most High is trying to let us know as a people. What is true unity? A lot of people and ourselves and other people think that unity is just about coming together. It is not. That's part of it. Coming together. But brothers and sisters, with understanding, we know that I may be in unity with a person that's in a whole nother country. And we just like that. We unity. We in, we're unified as one. So just being presently together is not the totality of the perspective of understanding of what unity really is. Unity is oneness, uniting together. And brothers and sisters, all my people, I want you to know, that's what we are commanded to be doing in these last days. What last day? Last days of what? We need to understand that. Let me show you something in the book of Zechariah. In the book of Zechariah, the Almighty gives us, oh, excuse me, Zephaniah. The book of Zephaniah, the Almighty in the second chapter gives us a command. And I, I highly recommend, if you don't have a Bible, I highly recommend that you get one. Because without it, you can rest assured you won't be able to follow along with us as we continue to do and to bring forth Yah's word and what he's commanding, as I said earlier, for us to do. This is a commandment from Yahweh himself. And you have to ask yourself, my people, and my people is the so-called African Americans, all black descendants of slaves that were scattered to the four corners of the world. Our people are everywhere, even on the continent of Africa. And I'm going to tell you, Yah is calling us to come together for one reason. Do you hear me? For one reason. And we need to know what that reason is. You know, we've had million man marches, million women marches. We've had togetherness, talked about all our life. Yeah, we need to get together. Yeah, we need to come together. Yeah, we, we just need to unify. I've heard this all my life. But little do our people know there is a calling together that Yahweh is calling us together for. Let's look at what the Creator said in Zephaniah, the second chapter, the first verse. It says, gather yourselves together. Yeah. Gather together, O nation not desired, before the decree bring forth, before for the day pass as the chaff, 
before the fierce anger of Yahweh come upon you. Before the day of Yah's anger, he repeats himself, come upon you. He's warning us, y'all. He's going to be angry when he come and get us. It's all through the book. He said, seek ye Yahweh, all you meek of the earth, which have wrought his judgment. Seek righteousness. Seek meekness. Maybe you shall be here in the day of Yahweh's anger. Hallelujah. Now, in seeing these scriptures, we should be, as a people, we should want to acknowledge what is he speaking of to come together for? Well, he answers the question right within the confines of these verses. And my goodness, let me tell you, and I want you to consider my people. When I say we need to come together, and then I show you what he said to come together for. And you think about today in the world. I want you to think about that right now. We just passed, our people just passed a time where they went out to vote. I want you to think about it. I want you to think about and meditate on exactly what Yahweh said. Right here is what our people did for the election just presently and recently. What do I mean by that? Could you imagine how Yahweh feels right now? You mean to tell me we can come together to vote for two men. Two men that Yahweh would never have to really lead you to what he's telling you to gather for. And you know, it's not like we can't come together. It's, we can see that. We, it's not like we can't gather ourselves together because we came by the millions. This was a record-breaking election. This was record-breaking. On not just uh, Biden coming out to vote for him. We talking about Trump. And some of our people voted for Trump. But the bottom line is most of them voted for Biden. They came together at the polls. In the mailboxes. They came together. It was a call out. Everybody was tweeting and deeting and screeting and showing people, look, this is what we need to do. We need to get the vote out. The statements was vote as if you're going to die. Vote as if your life depends on. It. These are the words that our people came out and they said, well, yes, we need to vote. We need to come together. For one common cause, and that is to get this man in office and to get the other man out. And let me tell you something. Your vote did not count to bring anybody out. Your vote, don't you know, your vote was always supposed to go to Yahweh. All of our votes was always to go to him. And you don't have to worry about every four years. For Yahweh has been Elohim, the King, the Savior, the Redeemer, the Most High. Before we were born and forever. Yahweh is our King. Yahweh is our Logan. Yahweh is our maker. Yahweh is our savior. Yahweh is our redeemer. Do you understand? We don't have to worry about him losing any election. Because no man can elect Yah. That's what makes him Yahweh. Nobody can elect him. 
or select him to be the king of the universe. He is all that and everything he want to be. And the Almighty commanded us to gather together for a reason. And it's very important that we understand this reason. It's right here. It's not to go vote for your enemy to roll over you. We've been doing it all our life since we came to this country. He wants us to gather together for this reason. It says, third verse, seek ye Yahweh, all you meek of the earth, which have wrought his judgment. Seek righteousness. Seek meekness. Maybe you shall be hid in the day of Yah's anger. If you seek righteousness and meekness. See, that's what we're supposed to gather ourselves together for. Is righteousness. What is right in the sight of Yahweh? Who is the owner of this whole earth? We're supposed to be coming together for him. And this is what he told us. And he warned us what he's going to do. First, he gave us a command. Then he gave us the judgment. And then he defines what he wants us to come together for. And then he gave us that last one. That you may be here in the day of Yah's anger. Look at it. He said, gather yourselves together. Gather together. Yeah. Oh, nation not desired. And we are the most undesirable nation on this earth. Truly. If we haven't figured that out, something wrong with us. We're the only people in the world as a people that's been complaining, trying to vote, trying to march, trying to protest equal rights. Racial discrimination and exploitation and subjugation. We have been saying these things ever since we've been to this country. No nation is more despised than us on this earth. He said, before the decree bring forth, before the day pass as the chaff. He's given us these warnings and the word is before. Because we always having to react to things when we need to be proactive. That's why I said before the decree bring forth, before the day pass as the chair, before the fierce anger of Yahweh come upon you, before the day of Yahweh's anger come upon you. So we know. What he want us to do. We know when he want us to do it. We can see how he want us to do this. And he even reveals. Right here in these scriptures. Who to see to. Who to do these things for. And he said seek ye Yahweh. All you meek. All you humble. All of you that's ready to bow down to his will, he said, which have wrought his judgment. What that means? That means you have carried out his laws. You have walked in his ways. You have sought him, and you know that beside him there is none else. He said, seek righteousness. Seek meekness. He's talking to the whole nation. He said, gather yourself together, O nation not desire. But those that seek Yahweh, because he's given the instructions, all you meek of the earth, because if you meek, you're going to seek Yahweh. But if you're stubborn, you're not. You're going to do your own thing. And the Almighty already warned us before the decree bring forth, before the day passes the child, before the day of Yah's anger come upon us. You, you can't blame him no matter what happened to us, because he already, and he reiterating it over and over, before this, and when I come, I'm going to be angry. 
if you do this, seek righteousness and meekness, you may be here. He's giving you everything, giving us everything. He's so wonderful. He's so merciful. He's so great. So we can't blame him. You can't get mad at Yah because he done gave his word. He spoke it. And he said, gather yourselves together for righteousness, for meekness. Because that may be the reason why you'll be here when he do come. He might hide you in the pavilion, in, in a, under a rock, in the grave. But you'll be here so that you won't be affected. Why do you think people who do right on the earth, why do you think y'all allow them to die off? Let me show you, in case you didn't know. Some people he hide in the grave, and he lets us know that. Praise y'all. And it's very important that we understand this. Let's go to the book of Isaiah for us to see this. And I praise the mighty Yah in Isaiah the 57th chapter. Isaiah the 57th chapter. Here's what Yahweh lets us know in his word in the first verse. He said, the righteous perisheth. That means a person that do right. That's why he said righteousness. The righteous perish. And no man lay it to heart. That means they don't consider why Yah will take a righteous man. Look what he did to Enoch. It says he was on the earth and he was not. In other words, he took Enoch away. Because he loved Enoch. But he didn't kill Enoch. Enoch lived when he left. He said, and merciful men are taken away. He said, none lay at the heart. Merciful men, men who love pity and righteousness and meekness. None consider that the righteous is taken away from the evil to come. Hallelujah. And you can, you can see a great evil, even now look at all the evil already going on with this coronavirus, they call it, which is the plague of Yahweh. Because Yahweh is the only one who can allow evil, diseases, death. They're all in his hands. It's his powers. So therefore, he's saying they're taking away righteous people who are meek. And carried and wrought his judgment. Carried out his judgment. He said they'd be taken away from the evil to come. Hallelujah. He said he shall enter into peace. They shall rest in their beds. Each one walking in his uprightness. So in other words. Oh my goodness. Don't you know. Yah's merciful. And he said, I will show myself merciful to whom I'll show myself merciful. That's the kind of Elohim we serve. When he see you righteous, he just might let you get some rest. Or some righteous people are going to continue to live and get stronger and stronger and make it through these hard times. Because it's important that you gather yourself together for what's right. Now, I want you to see also how do we accomplish being together in righteousness. This is the way we do it. You go to Daniel. Let's go to the book of Daniel, the 11th chapter, the 32nd verse. He gives the instructions for the last days. He's telling us to gather ourselves together in the manner to be meek and humble let me show you another aspect of that. And it's in Daniel 11, verse 32. It says, And as such as do wickedly against the covenant, shall he corrupt by flatteries. But the people that do know their Elohim 
shall be strong and do exploits. Hallelujah. In other words, when you know your Elohim, when you know the only Elohim there is and beside him, there is none else and his name is Yahweh. When you know him, you get stronger and stronger and you do exploits. You do extraordinary things for Yahweh. You, you go over and above for the Most High. You serve him with all your heart, all your soul, and all your might. And he said, and they that understand among the people shall instruct many. Yet they shall fall by the sword, by flame, by captivity, and by spoil many days. Now, when they shall fall, they shall be hoping with a little help. But many shall cleave to them with flatteries. And some of them of understanding shall fall. To try them and to purge and to make them white. Even to the time of the end. Because it is yet a time appointed. Praise Yah. So what is the conclusion of this matter? Yah is saying in these days those that know Yahweh going to be strong. You're not going to be weak but you're going to be strong. And meek does not equal weak. Meek means strong enough to bow down to the will of Yahweh to do what's right. Now, let's get and define when we come together we know what to come together for. What is that? Righteousness and meekness. We know how to be strong but let me tell you something. Let's understand what unity looks like. We come in together, we strong, we meet. Let's see what Yah has put in this book for us to see what true unity coming together is supposed to look like. We already see all the characteristics of what Yah is telling us to do. And this is it. But I want you to also go to the book of Psalms, the 133rd chapter. Psalms 133. I highly, again, I say it again, I recommend that you get you some scriptures. Turn along with us. Turn along with us to see what Yahweh wants us to do right now. See, it ain't going to be no excuse on Judgment Day. That's why he said, before the decree bring forth. See, he see that our people can come together for the wrong reason. See, he said, don't follow a multitude to do evil. Our people don't know. They were sinning a great sin when they went to boat. According to the law in Deuteronomy the 17th chapter, Yah said, Thou mayest not set up over thee a king which is not thy brother. He clearly lets us know. Thou mayest not set a king over thee which is not your own people. And I praise Yah. If we have any few little technical difficulties, with Facebook but we'll be right back it's so important to understand when Yah says in Psalms 133 because now he's he's showing us an inkling of what it really looks like he said in Psalms 133 the first verse it says behold how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. Hallelujah. How beautiful, how wonderful it is, and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. Let me tell you, it's, it's precious. It really is, because it's going to say that in the second verse. It, said, it is like the precious ointment 
upon the head that ran down upon the beard, even Aaron's beard, and went down to the skirts of his garments as the dew of Hermon, as the dew that descended upon the mountains of Zion. For there Yahweh commanded the blessing, even life. Evermore. Hallelujah. Because that's what people who come together in unity for what's right, that's what they can look forward to. He said, life, the blessing, he commanded the blessing, even life forevermore. It's in his word. Read Daniel, the 12th chapter. He lets us know. Go there. We're going to go right back to it. But go there. Let's go there. Let's go to Daniel. I mean, think about it. death is everywhere. We just, our people just celebrated death with uh, Halloween. Our people dealing with death, with this virus, and every other sickness. But the heathen will make you think that's the only sickness in the world today. If a person sniffed and went to the hospital these days, got a test, and you get just, just let a little snot come out your nose when that doctor see you, and the first thing they're going to put down there is, uh, CV, COVID. so Corona. That looked like Corona to me. And you better hope nothing don't happen to that person, cause they gonna put them right there in the number on that screen, on the television screen, as a casualty for it. It's like nobody ain't dying or nothing else. Y'all see, it. the simple believe every word, but the wise. Looking well to their going. Do you understand? Daniel, the 12th chapter, and this is what the Creator told us. He said in the first verse, and at that time, Michael, Michael, shall stand up, the great prince which standeth for the children of thy people, and there shall be a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation even to that same time. And at that time, thy people shall be saved. Thy people shall be delivered. Everyone that shall be found written in the book. Many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake. Some to everlasting life and some to shame and everlasting contempt. And they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament, and they that turn many to the thing we just read in Zephaniah, the second chapter, where he said, seek righteousness. He said, those that be wise are going to shine as the brightness of the firmament, and they that turn many to righteousness. Hallelujah. As the star ever and ever. And what is righteousness? Righteousness come by keeping the laws, the statutes, the commandments, the judgments, the precepts, the testimonies, the ordinance and covenants, and every word that proceeds out of the mouth of Yahweh. Because guess what did y'all say in Daniel? Deuteronomy 8 verse 3. Man does not live by bread only, but by every word that proceed out of the mouth of Yahweh does man live. See, in other words, we humbling ourselves, gathering ourselves together to seek righteousness and meekness, it's going to determine how long we live on this earth. Now, I don't think nobody desires to lose and shorten days or have their days cut off. But that's exactly what happens when we do not seek for righteousness. Righteousness is the law, the statutes and commandments, which our enemies told us is done away with. They were nailed on the cross. But every single time I ask one of my brothers who says he believes in Christ and Christianity, every time I ask him, I say, well, let me ask you this. So you're saying we don't have to keep those commandments no more, huh? And he said, that's right. Christ died for all that. I said, oh. Okay, so let me ask you a question. What you're saying is, I see your daddy and your mama, 
know what you ought to do. If your mom and daddy ever made you upset with them, why don't you just pimp slap them right here in front of me? Because you could do that. You could do whatever you want to do. Now, you know what? I know you don't want to do it. Let me do it. Let me pimp slap your mom and your daddy in front of you. You know what you say? I won't even go there. That's how you feel inside. You would be like, the nerve of him would say this to me. But why wouldn't I say that? If I can't keep the commandments, if I don't have to keep the commandments and laws no more, then that means I don't have to worry about no repercussions. I could do what I want to do. I could do what I want to do. Do you understand? Anybody that tells us that the commandments of Yahweh were nailed to the cross of life. Yah said, but thou, O Daniel, in the fourth verse, shut up the words and seal the book even to the time of the end. Many shall run to and fro and knowledge shall be increased. Hallelujah. Because knowledge is being increased, y'all. Knowledge is being increased right before our eyes. Let me, let me give you an example. We at the House of Israel of Atlanta, We've been praised the mighty Yahweh. We have been able to reconnect with some of our brothers and sisters and families and villages and, co and congregations. We never know. But now we hooking up with looking like three different leaders and the people of their congregations right here at the House of Israel of Atlanta. We hook up. We talk during the week. I talk to these leaders during the week. I praise Yahweh. We just had a wonderful Sabbath this past Sabbath. Because let me tell you something. We supposed to unite and was right. And praise Yahweh. He has blessed it. It's growing. It's almost like uh, it's spreading. It's almost like togetherness is spreading for our people. And I know some people don't like that. And especially our enemies. But guess what? Yahweh commands us to gather ourselves together for what's right. For unity. For to humble ourselves. To seek meekness. To seek righteousness and learn the laws. And it's just wonderful to see the beautiful brothers and sisters in Kenya. Hallelujah. To see them just dancing and being happy about learning even more of laws, statutes, and commandments. Because, why? Because we got together and we talked about it. And guess what? We saw where there were some things that they saw they need to learn. And let me tell you something. We can learn from them. Because the bottom line is when you come together and you gather yourself together and you communicate and talk to each other, if you listen, you can hear things you never may have heard before and they go right along if it's the truth with the word of Yah. And let me tell you ain't no feeling better than that when we can unify. Instead of us dividing, instead of us being against each other but listen it's a known fact brothers and sisters we can't be together and, we agree, and we're not agreeing can't you can try, and that we should try to discuss what we should be coming together for. We should try. But when a person is stubborn, when you don't want to talk about this law, when you don't want to humble yourself and seek meekness, when you're teaching lies and deceit, when you're yourself, when you're not even seeking what's right, but you're seeking great words against the most high. We can't get together. Let me show you what I mean, brothers and sisters, because this book is a blueprint. It's a blueprint to how we should conduct ourselves as a people. The scriptures say to the law and to the testimony, if they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. Now, it's very important 
on how we see things in the word of the Almighty. Let's look at something to where when we look in the Holy Scriptures of the true and living Elohim, let's see what he reveals to us about how our people was, was doing what was not lawful and right. Coming up against the man of Elohim. And let's see what Yah told him to do. Let's see what Yah said to our people to do. And it's in Numbers chapter 16. See, there's a time for everything. And this is what the Almighty said. Because Yah only wants. Because we're going back to Psalms 133. He said how beautiful it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. Those are different words. Brethren dwell together and the word unity. Different words. The togetherness got to be for unification. Unify come from the Hebrew word unity, which means come together as one. Unity. Okay? This is what the Almighty told Moses and Aaron in Numbers the 16th chapter when Korah, Dathan, Byron and On came up against Moses and Aaron. This is what Yah said. It says in the 16th verse, and Moses said unto Korah, be thou all thy company before Yahweh, thou and they and Aaron tomorrow. And take every man his censer and put incense in him. And bring ye before Yahweh every man his censer, 250 censers. Thou also and Aaron, each of you his censer. And they took every man his censer and put fire in them and laid incense thereon and stood in the door of the tabernacle of the congregation with Moses and Aaron. And Korah gathered all the congregation against them unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation and the glory of Yah appeared unto all the congregation. Hallelujah. In other words, they saw the smoke in the back room. They saw Yah come down from heaven just to handle this matter. And why? What happened? Listen, you have to understand these brothers of Israel they gathered themselves together against Moses and Aaron. And these were who Yah was dealing with, Moses and Aaron. Because it says it in the first verse of the same chapter, in number 16. It says, Now Korah, the son of Izhar, the son of Kohar, the son of Levi, and Dathan, and Ambaran, the sons of Elah, and On, the son of Peleth. Sons of Reuben took me and they rose up before Moses with certain of the children of Israel, 250 princes of the assembly, famous in the congregation, men of renown. And they gathered themselves together against Moses and against Aaron and said unto them, you take too much upon you, seeing all the congregation are holy, every one of them. And Yahweh is among them. Wherefore then lift ye up yourselves above the congregation of Yah. And when Moses heard it, he fell upon his face. Why? See, Moses was meek. Moses didn't want that. Moses know Yahweh. That's why it says in Daniel 11 verse 32, those that know the Elohim shall be strong. Forth his word. And his laws and commandments. Dathan, Abiram, Korah, and On didn't like that. So they came up against Moses. And they came up against Aaron. And they said, you take too much upon yourself. Seeing everybody in the congregation is holy. Let me tell you something. I want you to understand. The scriptures say, and I just read it earlier. They gathered all the congregation, just about, almost everybody was on Korah, Dathan, Abiram's own side. Most, most of them. 
was on their side. In other words, and they said, look here, everybody in this congregation is holy. Well, guess what? How would they know that? How would they know if everybody in the congregation is holy? See, let me tell you something that I had to learn years ago. Yahweh is not with every congregation that's claiming to speak in his name. He's not with everybody. That's why he showed them later on after he killed Dathan and Byron Corrin on and many of their family members who sided with them. He let them know in the latter chapter. He let them know whose side he was really on. And what he did, he he caused them to bring some staffs out. He told the leaders to bring their staffs out, the chiefs of the tribe. And he said, the one that Yah said he's with, he was going to magnify to the extent that what Yah did, he grew flowers on the one that he chose. And that was Aaron's staff. He grew flowers and then it budded and started putting almonds, just came all of a sudden. In one minute, it was growing almonds. <laughs> Y'all had to let them know who you were with. When you come to gathering the people together, listen, this is what the Creator said further in the same chapter in the 20th verse after Korodath and Byron on was told to bring their senses. Yah said in the 20th verse of number 16, Yahweh spoke unto Moses and Aaron saying, separate yourselves from among this congregation that I may consume them in a moment. In other words, Yah commanded that they separate themselves from the congregation of Dathan, Abira, Korah and on because they were wicked to the core and he said and they fell upon their faces and said oh Elohim the Elohim of the spirits of all flesh shall one man sin and will thou be wroth with all the congregation and Yahweh spoke unto Moses saying speaking to the congregation saying get you up from about the tabernacle of Korah Dathan and the Bible Yahweh wasn't listening to Moses and Moses rose up and went unto Dathan and Byron, and the elders of Israel followed him. And he spoke unto the congregation, saying, Depart, I pray you, from the tents of these wicked men, and touch nothing of theirs, lest you be consumed in all their sin. In other words, what is sin? Sin is the transgression of the law. They were sinning. Do you know, brothers and sisters, Yahweh ain't going to be with you and all you're dealing with is sin. All you're doing is transgressing his law. All you're doing is causing discord among brethren like Dathan, Abira, Korah, and all were doing. And what did Yah show us in Proverbs, the sixth chapter, the sixth starting at the 16th verse? He said, six things do y'all hate. Yeah, seven is an abomination. And one of the major things at the very end that he said was that he hate sowing discord among brethren. Y'all hates that. That's exactly what they were doing. They were lying to the people, speaking against Moses and Aaron, and y'all was with them. And they wanted to make it look like he was with them too. And he, they said, look, uh, he with all y'all. Everybody in this congregation holy. Let me tell you. You better know. You better know who in leadership you listening to. You better listen to what they're teaching. You better analyze what they're teaching. Because you might be gathered together behind somebody who teaching lies and Yahweh ain't even with that leader. Do you understand? Do you understand? This is why Yah told him to separate. He said, 
So in the 27th verse, so they get up from the tabernacle of Korah, Dathan, and Abiram, and every side, and Dathan and Abiram came out and stood in the door of their tent, and their wives and their sons and their little children. And Moses said, Hereby you shall know that Yahweh has sent me to do all these works, for I have not done them of my own mind. Hallelujah. So in other words, brothers and sisters, let me tell you, Yahweh is commanding us to come together in unity before his decree bring forth. Before the day pass as the chair, before his anger come, and now it's too late. He's commanding us, come together for what's right. That's the only gathering that Yah wants from us. You, we could all be together as a people. But if we ain't together for him, and what he commanded us to do, which is the entire whole duty of man, is to fear Elohim and keep his commandments. And brothers and sisters, if somebody is not teaching, teaching you, if a Christian preacher, which I know he ain't, if a Muslim, Iman, and I know he's not, if it's a Moray and he ain't telling you to keep the commandment, law, statutes, and judgment, if they telling you something out of bounds of what Yah said, Yah said, just like he telling them, get yourself and separate yourself from among that congregation. Do you understand? Gather yourself together in unity for what's right. You might have to be the only person to come out of that congregation and declare I'm not sitting under this wickedness, these lies that I've taken up for. You better do it because y'all said you better do it before the decree. That's a warning. Not only that, not only that, let's go back to Psalms 133. Psalms 133. Because I love the word of y'all in this. Do you see the beauty in these three verses? They say a whole lot. Psalms, the 133rd chapter again, first verse. Behold, he said, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. Hallelujah. He's saying how beautiful, how pleasant, how righteous, how good to dwell together in unity. Keep stressing that word, unity, togetherness for what's right. Because guess what? Why would he say unity is what makes him happy? Gathering together for unity. Because guess what? If you're together and you ain't even together in what's right, you wasting your salvation. you wasting your time. He said it is the like the precious ointment upon the head that ran down upon the beard, even Aaron's beard, that went down to the skirts of his garment. Now, some of these said the same. Some of these congregations do not even teach the men of Israel to wear beards. They don't even teach them to wear them properly. I'm going to tell you something. If you brothers that you saying you know Yahweh, and you are trimming your beard, and you got a nice little line going here, line here, line there, and you tr uh, lining your head and cutting it up and cutting some of your hair off and do what some of the Jewish men and people do when they ball their heads or cut it real short, they wear a little key pod on there to cover it up so it won't look like they got no hair under there or look, uh, look like they might have some little hair or whatever. Let me tell you something. Did you know that is against the law? Did you know that Yah told us never to round the corners of our heads nor to mar the corners of our beards? Yah said that's neat. Not what your enemies have you to get you a neat little haircut and a neat little beard shaving. Let me tell you something. Brothers and sisters, we better learn what is right. In the sight of Yah. And most everything that's right in his sight. Is an abomination to the heathen. 
Do you understand? So, he said, it's like the precious ointment upon the head and that ran down upon the beard. Do you understand? He said, as the dew of Hermon and as the dew that descended upon the mountains of Zion, for there Yahweh commanded the blessing, even life forevermore. Hallelujah. Everlasting life is what that translates into. Everlasting life is in store for those who really want to come together for what's right. Unified together for what's right. Now, we can't unify together for what's right. We can't unify. Let me show you what I mean by that. I want you to go to Amos. Let's go to the book of Amos, brothers and sisters. Praise Yah. Verses 1. So we'll start at verse 1. Amos, the third chapter. And we'll start at verse 1. We're going to read three verses. Look what the Almighty said in the first verse. Hear this word that Yahweh has spoken against you, O children of Israel. Against the whole family which I brought up from the land of Egypt, saying, You only have I known of all the families of the earth. Therefore, I will punish you for all of your iniquities. Meaning our sins. He going to punish it and he doing it. Why do you think we're in the conditions we're in today? Because he punishes. Why do you think we came on slave ship? Because that's Yah's punishment. Why do you think he allowed the discrimination? Punishment. Why do you think we're dying quicker than anybody else and have the highest rate of most any disease you name and we're the minority and not the majority? It's because we're being punished for our sins. He said, you only have I known of all the families of the earth. Therefore, I will punish you all of your iniquities. And then he said, can two walk together except they be agreed? Let me tell you something. <clears throat> Yahweh had an angel to lead us. And he said, I put my name is in him. So you better do what he said. Because he got my name in him. He's speaking my words. Because Yahweh could not walk with us. He did not. In other words, there was a time where Yah was so angry with us. Yah sent an angel to guide us in the way. We got to understand, y'all. Yah said, how can two walk together? Except they be agreed. Yah's not going to walk with us. Unless we walk with him. We got to walk in his ways. That's a requirement. That's why we read it every Sabbath. We read those requirements in Deuteronomy the 10th chapter, starting the 12th verse. What does Yahweh thy Elohim require of thee? But to fear Yahweh thy Elohim. To walk in all his ways. See, in other words, we have to learn to walk in his way. And this is what Yah is telling us. He's asking a question. Can two walk together? Except they be agreed. We can't walk together. Unless. Me and you. Are agreed. Or we just won't be able to walk together. We won't be able to. Do certain things together. Because now we're just not agreed. And this is what. Yah want us to do. He want us to come together. To agree. On unity. To agree on what is right together. And we as a people. I truly don't believe we're working hard enough. I don't believe we're working hard enough. To come together. I tell you. I, I, prayed, I praise the mighty Yahweh. Like I said earlier. For the togetherness. Of the spirit of my brothers. I have to compliment my brothers, Elijah, Cletus, and the 
my other beloved brother, I have to compliment them that they were willing to come together that we might be a house of Israel in different countries. Hallelujah. I have to say hallelujah because it warmed my soul this past Sabbath and all these Sabbaths that we've been having. I praise the mighty Yahweh and I I praise Yah that he has allowed us to be able to communicate with each other, to hear each other out, to know what's going on with each other, like Yah want us to do, like he want us to come together and love each other and respect what he said in his laws, statutes, and commandments, and we walking together in unity. Ain't nothing like it. Yah wanted us also to know something else. Let's go to 1 Kings. Let me show you. In the book of Kings. Let me show you. A question was asked. In 1 Kings the 18th chapter. 1 Kings the 18th chapter. I want you to think about what. Is being said. This was when our people. Was listening. And under the rulership. Of a wicked king. Named King Ahab. And they was listening to all his false prophets. Wind up being about 850 in total. And this is what happened. This is the question that was posed to them. For believing in the same type of false gods that our people are worshiping today. Yes, I mean it, y'all. The same type of false gods that our people are worshiping today. Because that's why y'all said in Deuteronomy 32. What did he say? He said, they shall worship new gods whom your fathers feared not. Gods that newly come up. In other words, Renew God. Newly, it comes from new, renewed gods. Same lie, different name. Same wickedness, different time. But it's the same. Because all the gods are false itself. The true and living Elohim, and that's Yahweh. And this is what Yah said in 1 Kings 18 chapter. He said in the 20th verse, So Ahab sent unto all the children of Israel and gathered the prophets together unto Mount Carmel. And Elijah came unto all the people and said, This is what he said. How long halt ye between two opinions? If Yahweh be Elohim, Follow him. But if B-A-A-L, the false God, then follow him. And the people answered him not a word because they were guilty. They couldn't answer. When he asked the question, all the people, he asked them, look here, how long will you be torn between two opinions? The only true Elohim is Yahweh. Now, if you want to worship the false one, go ahead and follow him. Then, Look what happened. It says, And then Elijah, then said Elijah unto the people, I, even I only, remain a prophet of Yahweh. But B-A-A-L's prophets are 450 men. Let them therefore give us two bullets. Let them choose one bullet for themselves and cut it in pieces and lay it on the wood and put no fire under it. And I will dress the other bullet and lay it on the wood and put no fire on it. And call ye on the name of your false gods. And I'll call on the name of Yahweh and the Elohim that answered by fire. Let him be Elohim. And all the people answered and said, it is well spoken. Isn't that something? And Elijah said unto the prophets of the false god, choose you one bullet for yourselves and dress it. First, 
for you are many. And call on the name of your deities, but put no fire under them. And they took the bullock which was given them, and they dressed it and called on the name of B-A-A-L from morning until noon, saying, Oh, false God, hear us. Because that's what many of you are doing when you talk to Christ, when you talk to Yeshua. But there was no voice. You notice you ain't never heard nothing. And I don't care what these lying preachers tell you in the church. They lying to you. It says, nor any that answered. And they leaped upon the altar which was made. And it came to pass at noon that Elijah mocked them and said, Cry aloud, for he is a deity. Neither Either he is talking, maybe you know, maybe the reason why he ain't answering you is because he's talking to somebody. Or he is pursuing, or he is in a journey, or peradventure he sleepeth and must be awakened. These are the same characteristics of the Christ of the New Testament. Same stuff. He was weary from his journey. In other words, it says, or oh, he is in a journey. And then it says, or oh, perhaps he's sleeping. This New Testament tells you they had to wake up that sissy on that ship in the book of John. They had to wake him up. And then when he woke up and got that mouth out of his eyes, he said, waters can't be still. Just, and we listen to this. This is a book. The New Testament was written by a man named Marcion and a Paiso family. Look it up for yourself. Because we don't know how we look. We don't know how disunified and not together we are. See, we can't get together with our Christian brothers. Because guess what? You're worshiping another God. We can't go to fellowship and worship together in the church. You can come to the house of Israel of Atlanta, but we can't come to the church unless you want to hear the word of Yah. We will come. But we can't come together because we ain't agreeing. Our Muslim brothers, we can't come together with you because we ain't agreeing. But even some of my Israelite brothers who say they know Yahweh but believe that a day start in the evening or at night or believe that uh, Yah got a, a calendar by paper. Just like Moria Alicia used to say. He said and we learned it and we all learned together that Yah's calendar is in the sky. Since when did the lights that he gave, since when did uh, the calendar in the sky become a calendar on paper like all the nations got? When did that happen? It only happened because when you are under leadership who wishes to teach and do what they want to do, Rather than what thus said Yahweh, you're going to find yourself to be a liar and you're going to find yourself in a congregation with liars. Because let me tell you something, you will never see in the Holy Scriptures one word that ever tells you that Yah has a calendar on paper. You won't even see the word calendar nowhere in Scripture. There is no Hebrew word for calendar. Just like J.C., when people come to us and say, Christ is in the book of Isaiah. Christ is in the book of Isaiah 9. Isaiah, the seventh chapter. Oh, yes, he's in Isaiah 53. Oh, yes, he's in Daniel, the ninth chapter. And then I say, well, show me his name. Come on, brother, show me his name. Come on, make me a believer. I'll, I'll, look, I'll stop teaching what I'm teaching now. Show me Christ in this book. Because y'all said you died for your own sin. Show me where y'all changed. Show me. Show me. That's why Yah wants true unity. We can't get together, brother. We ain't agree. 
we ain't agreed on something that's real important. That's why it's so important, brothers and sisters, that we come together on what's right. Now, mind you, I named and showed you same characteristics of the Christ of the New Testament. They had to wake him up on the ship. Verse 27 of 1 Kings 18 clearly says that truly he asked him. The prophet mocked him. That's where it started off. Elijah mocked him. He was he was making fun of him. And I'm doing the same thing about this thing in the New Testament. Something that you, somebody that you think is real, but in other words, y'all said, beside him, there is none else. And they had to wake him up on a ship, says the New Testament. He was tired and weary from his journey. I recall that Yahweh said that he don't weary. He give faint. He gives strength to the faint. And he don't worry. And he don't sleep. And he don't slumber. So you ain't talking about my Elohim when you talk about some trinity. So Yah said he won. And when you look up that word one, it's going to say unity. Meaning all his powers is united. He is the Elohim. Of all things. In other words. He is Elohim. And beside him there is none else. All powers is in his hands. He is the almighty. The all seeing. The all knowing. The only one who can save. The only one who can kill and make alive. The only one who can wound and heal. That's it. He's our only lawgiver. He's the judge of the earth. He is the most high. He is the king of kings. And the master of masters. Furthermore. Because it's, it's so important. I praise Yah. I really do. And I, I, I'm going to tell you. Show you. I'm going to share with you right now. What I praise the almighty for. I praise him. For showing us in his word. Who he's had chosen to be the king for our coming together. Did you hear what I said? I praise him for showing us in his word the king that he's chosen by name to bring our people together. His name is David. And everywhere you see in prophets living in different times, it's consistent that they're going to speak of David's gathering. First, let me show you Genesis, the 49th chapter. That the gathering of Yah's people is going to be David. This is what he said in the book of Genesis, the 49th chapter. It says in a verse, Judah, thou art he whom thy brethren shall praise. Thy hand shall be at the neck of thine enemies. Thy father's children shall bow down before thee. Judah is a lion's whelp from the prey, my son. Thou art gone up. He stooped down. He couched as a lion and as an old lion. Who shall rouse him up? The scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor a lawgiver from between his feet until Shiloh come. And unto him shall the gathering of the people be. Hallelujah. And Shiloh, this epithet, this represents David. David has everything in the word of God to do with the one who would be the one that people would gather themselves together when they come together. Let me show you the consistency here. 
All you have to do is go to the book of Ezekiel, chapter 37, please. Ezekiel, chapter 37, when it speaks of the dry bones, when it speaks of our people coming back together in true unity, Yah chose David, hallelujah. He said in Ezekiel, the 37th chapter, in the 21st verse, and say unto them, Thus said Yahweh Elohim, Behold, I will take the children of Israel from among the heathen. See, he's going to correlate when he take our people and bring them out of all the countries and bring them back home. And that's only going to be those that are righteous. Just read Ezekiel the 20th chapter. See, in this same prophet, he revealed to him this right here is going to be after he done judged us after he brought us out of the nation. That's why I'm, I'm, I'm blowing the horn like I supposed to. Yah said, gather yourself together, O nation not desire. Before, he used the word before. Four times in the second verse. Before the decree of bread. Before the day passed as a chair. Before the fierce anger of Yahweh come upon them. Before the day of Yah's anger come upon them. You can't, we can't say he didn't want us. See, come together, gather yourselves together before these things happen. Why? Because when he gathers us on every side, like we read it right now, Yah has chosen who is going to be the king of Israel and the highest king on earth as a man. Now, Yah is the king of kings, but Yah has chosen a holy one, a little holy one, to gather the people together. That's why it says in Genesis 49, to Shiloh come, but to him shall the gathering of the people be. He said, and I will make them one nation. Verse 22 of Ezekiel 37. In the land upon the mountains of Israel. And one king. Shall be king to them all. And they shall be no more two nations. Neither shall they be divided into two kingdoms anymore at all. Neither shall they defile themselves anymore with their idols. Nor with their detestable things. Nor with any of their transgressions. But. I will save them out of all their dwelling places wherein they have sinned and will cleanse them. So shall they be my people and I will be their Elohim. Don't you know when you hear people say you can't keep the law in captivity. What they saying is it's okay to sin because you can't keep the law. That's the biggest lie in the world. And this answers it. He said, but I will save them out of all the dwelling places wherein they have sinned. Because we are sinning against the law that is forever. This is a dagger in the throat of anybody who go around saying, you don't have to keep the Sabbath no more. And there's plenty of people who was keeping the Sabbath of our people was saying they were serving Yahweh, but all of a sudden they, they got caught up with the wrong thoughts and mindset. Well, you sinning. And you're speaking great words against the Most High when you say you can't keep the Sabbath. You can't be clean as you can be. No, we don't have the red ashes of the red heifer, but you still supposed to be as clean as you can. Then, he clearly lets us know, so shall they be my people. After what? He said, I will cleanse them. Yah's going to do that for us. And I will be the Elohim. And David, here it is, he names him. David, my servant, shall be king over them. Not, now you notice it didn't say, 
and David's son, later on, his seed. Huh? You notice it didn't say uh, a descendant of David. It didn't say that, did it? It said, and David, my servant, shall be king over them. And they all shall have one shepherd, and they also shall walk in my judgments and observe my statutes and do them. And they shall dwell in the land that I have given unto Jacob, my servant, wherein your fathers have dwelt, even they, and shall dwell therein, even they and their children and their children's children forever. And my servant David shall be their prince forever. Hallelujah. He correlates David with the gathering of the people. As he said years ago. That's where when some people, just because you might see a word in Genesis, just because you see a word in Exodus that he said he's going to do later on in life, Yah speaks in Genesis of things he's going to do way off. Just like when he said in Genesis 15, verse 13, and 14, uh, 13 through 16, know of a surety that your seed shall be a stranger in a land that is not there. And they shall serve them and they shall afflict them four hundred years. And also that nation whom they shall serve will I judge. And afterwards shall they come out with great substance. That has not happened yet. That is to come. And he said, and you, Abraham, shall be buried in a good old land, in a good old age. Then he said, but they shall come hither again. Meaning the second time. Once I've settled them, they're going to come back again. For the iniquities of the Amorites is not yet full. And it's not. Even unto this day, it's not. And y'all spoke that many years ago. Just like he had it through his servant. Jacob, our forefather, Genesis 49, to speak that word that he's speaking of right here to come to pass. And it still hadn't happened yet. It still haven't happened yet. That word is still to come. But it was way in Genesis when he said, Unto him shall the gathering of the people be. Hallelujah. That's how you know the grass withers, flower fades, but the words of I of him shall stand forever. See, this is the true unity y'all talking about. See, everybody who made, who came back, who's going to come back, excuse me, because they ain't, this ain't happened yet. Everybody who's going to come back is righteous. <laughs> Hello? In other words, he spoke this Everybody that's going to fulfill this to come back in that land, according to Ezekiel 20, they're going to be righteous. Oh, yeah. And then he said, moreover, listen to this. I will make a covenant of peace with them, and it shall be an everlasting covenant with them, and I will place them and multiply them and will set my sanctuary in the midst of of them forevermore. In other words, he's going to fulfill his covenant of peace. Because David is a covenant that he gave to our people. The covenant of David. In other words, read Isaiah the 55th chapter. Read it. You'll see. He made a covenant. And that's what David represents. Peace, love, unity. That's what he represents. Peace. Now, how do I know that? Uh, we can go to Isaiah chapter 9. Let's go to Isaiah chapter 9. Now, I'm about to make some people upset right now. By what I'm about to say. If you believe in Yeshua and you messianic, you've been lied to. You've 
and lied to them. But you can't blame nobody but yourself. Just like I had to blame myself for believing the lie myself. I believed it too. So I'm not really pointing no finger, but I'm just keeping it real. If you believe in that somebody named Yeshua is going to be the one that Yah going to choose, I just showed you one, but there's plenty of witnesses. Listen to this. Let's see. And then let's see what he himself said if you believe in him in this New Testament. Let's see what the writer said he said. For unto us, Isaiah 9 verse 6, for unto us, child is born unto us a son is given and the government shall be upon his shoulder and his name shall be called wonderful counselor the mighty Elohim the everlasting father the prince of peace but in the proper Hebrew it didn't read this way because no son no creature could be the everlasting father no creature could ever be the mighty Elohim because Yahweh is he all that and more. But the way it would have read, his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor because I got a, a holy name Bible. It'll read, because it's much older, the true manuscript of the writings is there. It says, the Wonderful Counselor of the Mighty Elohim, of the Everlasting Father, or the Father of Eternity, the Prince of Peace. That's what it would read. In the Holy Name Bible. Sacred. Or sacred scriptures. Much older than these. Watered down Bibles. That just give you a comma. When it would have been the word of. See he the wonderful counselor. Of. The mighty Elohim. Of the everlasting father. The Prince of Peace. And of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom. Because y'all, I just read to you in Ezekiel 37, a prophecy of his kingdom that y'all said, I chose my servant David. One king shall be king to them all. One shepherd shall lead them. That's David. And he said, to order it and to establish it with judgment and justice from henceforth even forever the zeal of Yahweh of hosts will perform this and David deserves the throne hallelujah he deserves it furthermore in looking at unity us coming together from captivity and gathering ourselves together we're going to see David from another prophet in another time. Let's go to Jeremiah 30. Hallelujah. Let's go to Jeremiah 30. Look what y'all said in the 7th verse. Jeremiah the 30th chapter, the 7th verse. At last. At last. For that day is great. So that none is like it. It is even the time of Jacob's trouble. And I'm going to tell you something. Jacob is in trouble right now. We die on every side. And we don't know how we look as a people. We can come together to vote, but we can't come together to gather ourselves together for Yahweh. You can imagine how he feels. You couldn't show nowhere where he told you to vote for two white men to be over you. You'll never see that. You'll never see that because Yah said we were always to choose the one he would choose. Read Deuteronomy the 17th chapter. See, we gather ourselves together for the wrong things. Let's see. Is it going to get better for our people? Let's see. Since they chose Biden. Let's see if Biden. Ain't going to bite you. Let's see if Biden. Going to make things better. Let's see if Biden. Is going to help. In this virus. Let's see if Biden. Going to be the savior. Of the black man. 
blessing. I guarantee you, he or no one else will. Because our Savior is Yahweh. That's why it says in Isaiah 33rd chapter. That's why it says, Yahweh is our king. Yahweh is our judge. Yahweh is our lawgiver. And he will save us. Isaiah 33 verse 22. Check it out. He going to save us. And that's because he's the savior. Nobody else. Jeremiah 30. He said, he going to save us out of this trouble. For it shall come to pass in that day, said Yahweh of hosts, that I will break his yoke from off thy neck and will burst thy bonds and strangers shall no more serve themselves of him. But they shall serve Yahweh their Elohim and David their king whom I will raise up unto them. Hallelujah. That is again. Then he said, therefore, fear thou not, O my servant. Jacob said, Yahweh, neither be dismayed, O Israel. But lo, I will save thee from afar. And thy seed from the land of their captivity. And Jacob shall return and shall be in rest and shall be quiet. And none shall make him afraid. You see how it correlates with David. The gathering of the people from the nations. He said David would be the king. Not Christ. He said David would represent. The peace of his government. It shall be peace. Yah is going to make sure that. So why would you. Oh my goodness. Why would you be worshiping. Someone who said he never did come for peace. Last things I want to show. Let's go to this New Testament. Let's go to Luke and Luke. Let's go to the book of Luke. And let me show you something that this man, you claim you're going by what he's saying you claim that your preacher is preaching the truth, but he can't lay hands on the sick and recover nobody. But you would believe the lies even unto this day. Let's go to Luke. Let's see what old Lukey Luke got to say. Because in the book of Luke, it's going to reveal exactly how Luke sees peace when it comes to Christ but Christ is supposedly quote unquote in red supposed to be speaking this Luke 12 I'm going to read starting at verse 51 Luke chapter 12 verse 51 for all you messianics all you brothers and sisters that believe you're sure a descendant of David is going to come listen to this and he's going to be the prince of peace yeah. it's 51st verse Suppose ye, and this is Christ talking. You're sure if you call him that. Suppose ye that I come to give peace on earth. He said, I tell you, nay. Nay means no. No way. Isn't that something? How he gonna be fulfilling Isaiah 9? Suppose ye that I come to give peace on earth. I tell you. Yeah, but rather division. And then he breaks it down. Division means separation. He ain't trying to bring Israel together. He's telling you, I'm here to divide you. And Jeff, that is just what he has done. He has divided our people. That spirit, because he don't exist. The spirit of Christ is in most of the black man's home. That's why we can't serve Yahweh. Because you're too busy praising Christ. You're too busy uh, honoring Yeshua. You're too busy uplifting him. And what he supposedly did. Died for our sins. And Yah said every man dies for his own sins. 
Deuteronomy 24, verse 16. And we would wonder why we're in the conditions that we're in today. We would wonder why Yahweh ain't giving us no favor in the nations. Just read what he said in Jeremiah 16, chapter. He said, I will show you no favor because you have forsaken me and served other gods and worshiped them. And have not kept my law. Look at Jeremiah the 16th chapter. And read that chapter. Read Jeremiah the 5th chapter. And see what Yahweh said. He told us. He warned us. He said. I'm not going to show you no favor. He said. For from henceforth. There shall be five in one house divided. Three against two. And two against three. See that's five. Divided. Two plus three. Father shall be divided against the son. Oh my goodness. Ain't that something? I thought in the last days the prophet Elijah in Malachi the fourth chapter y'all said he shall bring the hearts of the children back to the fathers and the hearts of the father back to the hearts of the children. And he start come and smite the earth with a curse. This man is speaking great words against the most high mission. I thought he came to do the will of the Father. Look like he is making a mockery of himself. Looks like he lied. Looks like this is somebody who done lied to us and put their words in a book that y'all never speaks in, and that's the New Testament. The Father shall be divided against the Son. Shoot, forget Elijah coming. And the Son against the Father. The mother against the daughter, and the daughter against the mother, the mother in law against her daughter in law, and the daughter in law against her mother in law. He makes it plain. This is the person that you will teach your children to serve and to wait on you, waiting on somebody to keep you divided. When Yahweh said, Gather yourself together in the preciousness of unity and gathering. Somebody who said, I. You might have thought I might have come for peace, but I tell you, no, I come for division. I came to keep you black folks separated. Because guess who gave it to us? Guess who gave us a good dose of Christianity on the plantations of slavery? And you know who it is. It's the white man Europeans who brought us butt naked on slave ships as Yahweh said they would do. Just read Deuteronomy the 28th chapter. Just read the book of Joel when it tells you that black nations, African nations, native Africans sold us to the Grecians. It's right there. Our history is in that Old Testament that they call it. Well, guess what? Let's understand. This is what happens when we don't come together in unity true unity or what's right. Lies take over instead of the truth. That's why we need to come together for what's right. Praise the mighty Yah. Praise the mighty Yahweh. I could I could show you more. I could show you what a man said if you believe in it. I could show you what he said to hate your mother. Your father, your sister, your brother, your cousin. And don't forget your best friend and your own self. I could show you that in this book, in the book of Luke. I could go down the line and show you where he showed a man who wanted to go to his daddy's funeral. He told him, look here, and you know this old saying in the New Testament. Let the dead bury the dead. That's what he told a man who wanted to go and bury his father to see him for the last time. That's what this lie told this man according to the story in the New Testament. When he who was, he was a drunkard. Now I want you to know this book says he was a wine pepper. He loved to drink. Eyes red and bloody all the time. Went to a wedding. And he told everybody, give me some wine. I want some wine. And his mama tried to step in and say, y'all give my boy some wine. And then he looked at his mama and said, woman, what am I to do with you? That's in this New Testament. 
I want to see what y'all will tell y'all mamas if you asked her that. I rest my case. Praise the mighty Yahweh. That's what I'm talking about. No questions. <laughs> I love it when it's no question. Praise the mighty Yahweh. I must have did my job. Hallelujah. What can I say? Every Sabbath. Every Sabbath. 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. We're live from the sanctuary of Elohim at the house of Israel of Atlanta. Praising the Most High with a holy convocation to the Most High. Every Sunday, 3.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We're on www.blogtalkradio.com. We're on Sunday at 3.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And you can call to listen in to the broadcast on 319, area code 319-527-6185, as well as every T-U-E-S day, T-U-E-S day in the evening. Well, now is night. We're right here. Praise the mighty Yahweh. And let me tell you, we have some upcoming surprises. Some upcoming shows that I'm working on with some of the people. And I praise y'all for it too. We're talking about doing a lot of great things for us to come together in unity. Hallelujah. And to praise and uplift the word and the name and the law of Yahweh. So, on behalf of the entire House of Israel of Atlanta, Yahweh loves you, and so do we. Shalom, shalom, shalom. Hallelujah.